Well, it's been a much-anticipated interview. Talk show host Ellen DeGeneres sat down with the Duchess of Sussex to speak about her life in L.A. and raising a family. Well, she's a good sleeper, but the teeth are coming in, so, you know, any moms will understand that, where you go, they might be the best sleeper in the world, and then the moment that that's happening, you just have so much sympathy for them. So, yes, I've been up most of the night. But that thing that when I was uh, giving her that, that's a great teething thing. I'm sure everyone knows this, but when you put it in the freezer and it's cold and oh, it's on yeah. their gums, that really soothed her. That's great. Or old school style, you just take a washcloth and dip it in some apple juice, or right? All the moms are nodding. You go, anything, anything to relieve that. Tequila, them. anything. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't tried that yet. Yep. I know. That's Auntie Ellen for you. Yep, that's right. <laughs> After a year of headlines and pressure from the palace, the Duchess embraced her cheeky and cheerful side in this interview. Well, to take us through it all, we're joined by Royal Commentator Angela Morlard live in the studio. A lot to unpack here. <laughs> this is so... I'm, I'm all over this. First of all, Ellen introduced <laughs> Megan. There's as only quite... one person more all over <laughs> yes. it, and that's Anne. <laughs> as quite my friend, mm. the Megan, Megan, the Duchess of mm. Sussex. So they, they seem friendly. Is there a, a real history? Yeah, the neighbours. Because I often introduce people as my friend, and they're not, and they're not really. <laughs> <laughs> really? I'm your friend, Kylie. You are my, my big friend. <laughs> At stage, she said, this is my friend, Matt Doran. So now I know what's really going on. We yeah. think they are really friends, right? <laughs> they are really friends, but only recently. They live next door to each other now in L.A., and they actually, from the sound of it, as you saw, she called her Auntie Ellen, and, of course, they spend time together. But they met 10 years ago when Ellen, they were at a uh, dog shelter, and Ellen said to her, you have to take that dog. And she doesn't actually remember it, but Megan's always remembered it. So, yeah, a bit of background there. But she has taken the mickey out of Megan a lot in the past. Good. Well, Megan shared this story about a fun night out with Harry. I was at that party. He came to see me in Toronto and, um, and our friends and his cousin Eugenie and now her husband Jack, they came as well and the four of us snuck out in Halloween costumes to just have one fun night on the town before it was out in the world that we were a couple. So you went with Harry to a Halloween party and they had no idea it was the two of you? No. It was a, a post-apocalypse theme. So we had all of this very bizarre costuming on and we were able to just sort of have one final fun night out. Love that, Ange. <laughs> I know there's so many anecdotes in this interview. Whereas we had the Oprah interview, which was very victim Megan, and before that we had the Tom Bradbury interview where she, he was obviously asking her, you know, about her emotional state, and she said, thank you for asking. Mm. This is fun, Megan. This is Megan back in her town. And she gave away that gorgeous story about Halloween in Toronto and, and that friendship between Eugenie and her husband, mm. which is gorgeous. And she also talked about Halloween with her kids. Mm. But, Ange, I'm fascinated by how you go... The, the transition there, mm. and it has been a big one, hasn't it, from what you describe as victim, Megan, to mm. this much more affable, lovable, girl-next-door type. Yeah. And yeah. do you think that's been a conscious transition there? She's really repositioning herself in this interview. Definitely. This is, she's really taking it in a different direction. She also spoke about how Archie is adapting to being a big brother. He loves being a big brother. I think it's just, you know, everyone tells you... Well, actually, someone told, the, told H and I that... When you have one kid, it's a hobby, and two children is parenting. <laughs> and suddenly we realize, oh, right, everyone talks about what it's like for the second child, but no one talks about the adjustment for the first child yeah. when the second one comes along. So yeah. I think they have that moment of, like, oh, this is fun. Oh, this is how it is now. Well, he's so sweet. <laughs> he's what else did she have to say about her and H and the H. kids? Yeah. Oh, look, she said they were really happy. She said Harry was happy. When Ellen asked her, you know, how, what is it that makes him happy about living in California, she sort of said the lifestyle and the sunshine. She showed a really beautiful picture here of, um, of little Archie with the chickens. She talked about Halloween with the kids and how they hated the costumes, that they put, um, put um, Archie in a dinosaur costume and he had it off within five minutes and they uh, dressed up Lily as uh, a little skunk from, you know, Bambi, the little skunk and Bambi, and the audience went nuts for that. But um, look, they sound real. She's positioning herself as very normal. Mm. And she's also shared a story about her own childhood. I love, I love this story. So she's talking about her hair. Let's have a look at what she had to say. No, this resonates for me too. Hair look like that then is because I was obsessed with Andy McDowell and Four Weddings and a Funeral, and all I wanted was that perfect little curly haircut. So I asked my mom, went to the hairdresser and got it. And on that first day, I was like, this is amazing. I look like Andy McDowell. Let's do the first day first. In four weddings and a funeral. Yes. <laughs> and then it was as though everyone forgot to tell me, you have ethnic hair, 
you are not going to look like Andy McDowell in four weddings and a funeral. And that's what it ended up evolving into. And I'd go to school, and they said I looked like Krusty the Clown from The Simpsons. No. It was a real bummer. Oh. I know. Um, they're good wow. stories, aren't they? They're really... Where they come from? Like, to, to, is it just good producing by the, by the Ellen Show? No. Or is this, you know, highly confected, oh, I'm going to give you an anecdote, here it is, and enjoy it? Or am I too cynical? I'm cynical with you, Matt. Completely cynical. This is masterminded. She's got a court case going on with the Mail on Sunday in the UK, as we know at the moment. This is her repositioning herself as affable Megan, as friendly Megan, you know. And the stories are good, though. And she I does think, it well. But regardless, anybody who goes yeah. on that show, same thing with all of them. Um, Ellen put Megan mm. to a challenge. Oh. <laughs> now, Ellen does this with her guests. I am so surprised that Megan has done it. Megan had an earpiece in and basically had to do whatever Ellen told her to do. Let's take a look. Do a squat if you can hear me. <sighs> okay. All right. Let me try something real hot. Let me try something real hot. Okay. Mommy wants some heat. Mommy wants some heat. <laughs> like a chipmunk. Feeling. Mommy needs some milk. Get the milk out of my purse. Mommy needs some milk. Oh. <laughs> Give me my no, milk. Thank goodness. Okay, now drink it. <laughs> um, wow. <laughs> Isn't it? I just love it. Do you know what I also think is really interesting? Just before this interview came out, there was concern in London that this was going to really upset the Queen. Of course, we know what came out of Oprah. We had no idea it was going to be as bad as it was. But this is wonderful because it's sort of repositioning her as fun. There's nothing in this entire interview that would worry anybody. Nothing um, about the Royals? Nothing at oh. all. She doesn't even get asked this. This is actually about Meghan, the person she was. You know, she talks about making scrunchies when she's a kid. But how funny. She just plays along with it. And she's even better than, you know, so Ellen's speaking to her in her ear. But she just hams it up even more. And we forget she's an actress. She's jolly good at <laughs> do it. Do it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, do it. Yeah. Oh, he no, is I think she's wonderful. And I agree. As long as, you know, there's no none of this negativity more broadly towards the, the royal mm. family, it's very difficult to have any negative thoughts towards, yeah. towards the couple themselves. I'm looking at that thinking that's probably the woman that Harry fell in love with. Yeah. That's, so true, Kylie. That's yeah. why they're living in Montecito. That's, yeah. that's why he's done it. That's his wife. And they're yeah. happy. And, and they are happy. 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 Yeah. Good luck to them. I'd say so yeah. too. Thank, Thank you, Ange. That was Thank great. <laughs>